Welcome to Game Plunge, where we look at games and take a dive into the design behind them. The stealth genre has existed for a long time now. It was popularized by games like Metal Gear and Thief, and since its creation it's grown and improved a lot. There is something inherently fun about silently sneaking around, outsmarting your enemies, or emerging from the shadows to eliminate your targets. Stealth games exist in many forms and range from 3D games with wildly complex systems to a simple top-down 2D multiplayer game. In this episode, we'll take a look at Mark of the Ninja, a stealth game made by Clay Entertainment. Before we start, let me make it clear that genres in video games are really not at all clearly defined. For example, is Fallout inherently a first-person shooter game or a role-playing game? Is Left 4 Dead a horror game or a co-op first-person shooter? Well, the same thing goes for the stealth genre, because on the surface, stealth games are mainly about sneaking about and staying hidden. But when you really look at stealth games, you can see that it's actually mainly about recognizing moving patterns of guards, carefully analyzing your surroundings, and cleverly using the tools the game provided. You must use your problem solving and analytical skills to progress through the levels, elements you usually see in puzzle games. So in a way, stealth games are really puzzle games in disguise, with a little bit more room for error, and in an entirely different setting. Clay Entertainment understood this very well when designing Mark of the Ninja, because you can clearly see they applied some important principles in puzzle game design in their game. Designers have to make sure you have access to all the information you need to see and understand the problem presented. Purposely leaving out important information to make a puzzle more difficult really only causes frustration. To make a puzzle feel fair and fun you need to be shown all the necessary information. This also means that you understand the goal of the puzzle beforehand. A good puzzle makes sure that the only thing that stands between you and the goal is your own ability to put all the information together in the right way to reach the goal. Mark the Ninja does a great job at communicating all the important information to you in a very clear way. Just look at the sound waves. You always know exactly when God can hear you or when he can't hear you. Or look at the way the light system works. You know exactly when you can be seen and when you're invisible. What's important is that these systems are binary. You are either being detected or not. There are no vague sliders, no unclear line of sight, just plain and simple, on or off. Before you can solve very complex puzzles, you have to understand all the mechanics necessary to complete the puzzles. But how do designers know if you understand the mechanics well enough? Well, generally, games teach you new mechanics by first introducing it in a safe environment. Then right after that, you have to overcome a simple obstacle using the new mechanic. And then later, you're usually required to use this new mechanic under pressure with a bit more challenge. When the designers are confident you understand the mechanic, they can freely implement the mechanic in more complex puzzles. That is not to say you can't use puzzles to introduce new mechanics. It just means that usually such puzzles are all about the one mechanic they're trying to teach you, instead of incorporating several mechanics into one puzzle. But how will you know if you're even on the right track? The designers need to clue you in whether you're going the right way or if you're doing it completely wrong. The designers try to guide you through the puzzle, albeit very subtly. They try to make sure that you don't wander about aimlessly without giving away the solution. For example, lighting is a very powerful tool to make the player look in the right direction. It's very common for games to use lighting to steer the player's gaze. It works wonders to make sure you don't get lost, and it's much more subtle than a sign pointing you the right direction. Another way to let you know that you're on the right track is to lock you up in a room. This is basically the game telling you, yes, you really are on the right track. The answer to the puzzle really is in this room. But really, there are lots of ways to guide players through a level. Sometimes you don't even realize you're being guided, and if that's the case, well, then the designers did a good job. But as I said, stealth games are in a lot of ways similar to puzzle games. Therefore, the points I mentioned before are just as important for the design of a stealth game as they are for a puzzle game. Let's see how Marco the Ninja tackles these problems. We'll start by looking at how to make you understand all the basic mechanics in the first few minutes of the game. Hey, you. Don't you hear the bell? We wake up in a lit room and the game makes clear that this female Rule companion one, is apparently going to help us. Killed. She's going to show us a lot of useful information and by following her, you're taught the basic mechanics of the game. So let's look at how the game guides us and teaches us all the important rules. A good way to do this is by pretending to know you know absolutely nothing about the game. So let's try to pretend we play this game for the very first time, so that we can look at these first few minutes through the eyes of completely new hey, players. You. The game starts and there's no Don't long, the dragged out conversation. You get right into the action. 
I'm here to help you. Rule number one, don't get me killed. That's all she says before she quickly runs off. So what do we do now? Okay, so we can move. Great, now let's try and follow this woman. Oh, what's this? My character suddenly changed color. Strange, but let's go on. Okay, so now we can see these blue waves appearing just as a bell rings. Hmm, they're probably some kind of sound waves. But let's disregard that for now. So where do we go next? That woman got up there, and I only know how to move left or right, so how do I get up there? Okay, so we can jump. Okay, so now we're up here. Now, how do we crawl? The game will probably tell us in time. <laughs> well, that was easy, wasn't it? And now comes the challenge of getting through this vent. Once again, the game just shows you a button you can press, and when you press it, sure enough, we get what we want. So now we see this person ringing the bell getting shot. Immediately, this indicates danger. And now you know you've got to watch out. You run through two more lights, you can see the light dark transition some more. We're shown some of the basic movement, and then it's time to learn the very first stealth mechanic. Wait, where's your sword? Oh, and by the way, watch what happens when I drop down this platform. I slide across this pole. They didn't put it there for nothing, because now I know that wall sliding is a thing. Watch out. Uh oh, coming a guard way. is coming right at us. What do we do? Press E to use hiding spots? Well, okay. Let's just try pressing it. Do you see what they did here? They purposely stopped you right next to this hiding spot. So even if you don't know what okay. to do, simply keep following moving. the instruction on the screen will keep you safe. Now, do you remember what I said about teaching the player new mechanics? First, the mechanic is introduced in a safe environment, as we've just seen. Then, you Keep need to overcome a simple obstacle yourself using this new mechanic. With that in mind, let's look at what happens next. This time, there is no instruction on the screen telling you to do something. You just have to find a hiding spot yourself, and the guards are a lot closer now. If you walk too far back, this light will expose you, and there is absolutely no other way to avoid the guards. You have to use the hiding mechanic. But if you paid attention, the game already showed you some potential hiding spots. When you pass this obstacle, the designers can be sure you use this mechanic on your own at least once. So now we know how to hide from guards. Next, we're shown how to sprint. Let's try it right away. But wait, do you see how those birds are placed? If we follow the game's directions, we have no choice but to startle these birds with the sounds we make with our sprinting. Once again, this is an introduction to how these sound waves work. And sure enough, Shortly after this, we get our first challenge with this mechanic. You see, the first level in Mark the Ninja is basically a long series of small tutorials for mechanics, which all follow the same pattern. Introduction, challenge, introduction, challenge, etc. Instead of explicitly telling you how everything works, you just learn by playing the game. Pretending you know nothing about the game might seem a bit silly, but it really is a good exercise to figure out what a tutorial is and isn't teaching players. Of course, nothing can replace actual playtesters, but at least this exercise can help build a proper tutorial. Once you understand these basic mechanics, it becomes much easier for the designers to introduce you to new mechanics. Almost every level introduces some kind of new obstacle or skill you can use, but because you already understand the basic rules of the game, it's not difficult to add new rules. A fine example is when you're introduced to the dogs. Even though it's a completely new enemy, you can instantly make a few assumptions. And these assumptions really help the designers to introduce you to this new mechanic. The first thing you probably know is that since they're dogs, they can probably smell you or hear you better than humans. You're already familiar with what dogs do in real life. The second assumption you make is based on the consistency at which the game has shown you information. You see, the game made you pay attention to these circles. You know they're important because any time a guard was close to one of the circles you created, he could hear you. So the connection between the circle surrounding the dog and them noticing you is immediately clear. The same thing goes for the levels with lightning in them. You're already taught that if you're colored, you're visible, and if you're gray, you're hidden. So it's easy to make the connection that these lightning strikes make you visible because of the visual information you get. And of course, you know when to expect the lightning, because as you know, you can always hear thunder before the lightning strikes. Wait, that, that's not how it works. But it is a great example of putting mechanics before realism. 
The thunder sounds are a clever way to warn the player beforehand to make this mechanic more fair. You might not have even noticed this unrealistic storm while you were playing. Even though you probably did use the thunder sounds as a warning to hide, it goes to show that realism really isn't everything in games, and sometimes putting mechanics before realism is a right choice. As I said, pretty much every level introduces something different to you. If you play the game yourself, you'll probably notice how many different mechanics the game introduces. But at the same time, none of them really feel foreign. They're all in a way an extension of the rules you know already. This shows that Mark the Ninja understands perfectly how to quickly teach the player how to use new mechanics. But as we'll see now, they also do a great job of using those mechanics to create challenging levels. As I said before, stealth games are a lot like puzzle games. As an example, let's look at this part. It's quite late in the game and you already have several tools you can use to solve this section. As a result, there are many ways to do so. First of all, the goal is established. You have to get a keycard and this guy carries it. Just as a reminder, there's a blue circle around him. Next, we're shown all the information we need. If you step into the sniper's laser, they'll kill you. And if the sounds you make reach one of the guards, you're spotted. All the information you need is neatly provided for you. To solve this section, I just have to cleverly combine this information with the mechanics I know to be able to steal his keycard completely undetected, and then again, to get out undetected. You need to recognize God's patterns and cleverly use them to your advantage. And you need to use the tools you know in such a way that you can create an opening to slip through. But this isn't the only way to solve this, and that's where Mark with the Ninja, and perhaps stealth games in general, are fundamentally different from puzzle games. Because instead of having one challenge with one solution, we have a goal which can be approached in many different ways, and you can completely determine how challenging you want the game to be. You see, I wanted to stay completely undetected in this part to maximize my score. But there is nothing stopping you from simply killing the guards, or just rushing through it. If you're stuck on a challenge, it is completely your own fault, because you yourself set that challenge. You can always just give up and take the easy way out, because even if you do, you'll still complete the game all the same. And this, I feel, is one of the greatest strengths of stealth games. But of course, there are some parts where the mechanics of the game are used in a much more puzzle-like way. These sections are completely separate from the overall game and are optional. They might feel much more difficult because this time you don't have that safety net. You don't have a simple solution to fall back to. There's one way to complete the puzzle and you have to figure that out. But fine-tuning the challenge aesthetic isn't the only thing Mark the Ninja did well. To me, Mark the Ninja is also a lot about the fantasy aesthetic. They clearly put a lot of effort into making you feel like a ninja. I can show you pretty much any screenshot of the game and you'll immediately know it's about ninjas. The backgrounds, the characters, even the UI and especially the animations make you feel like a real ninja in this world. And what a perfect setting for a stealth game. But not only that, you also get a sense of power. The sense that you know something they don't. You can hear the guards talking to each other completely unaware that you're lurking in the shadows. I study every martial art from Thailand and Tokyo to Japan. I'm in the MMA Hall of Fame now. I want them to try and take me down. Come on! You have the power to drop down at any time to come and ruin their day. In some way, you're outgunned and outnumbered. But in reality, the real fun of stealth games is that you're in control of the situation. You have the power to come out of nowhere and attack these guards without them even knowing what is going on. You can watch the guards go crazy looking for you in places you left minutes ago, and you are the monster hiding in the darkness, and you can get to decide what happens to the people who oppose you. And that, I feel, is what makes stealth games, and especially Mark of the Ninja, so fun to play.